Hello friends and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church and I'm so happy that you've joined us for worship this day. We'll be continuing our series entitled Witness at the Cross and it's a series based on a book by Amy Jo Levine of the same name. We are taking a look at who were the witnesses at the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And remember that we are more than just readers of this event. We are invited to experience the death of our Savior and the witnesses of his crucifixion. And then question, what is our response in the world today to what we have witnessed? Let us now turn together in worship and song. a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you me 
Hello Church, my name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of our online worship together. During worship, you can use the chat or the comment function on any platform that you're watching on to share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and our online worshiping congregation. I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and our online resource that virtually connects you to our Connect card, signups for upcoming events, worship videos and resources, kids and family resources, and our online giving platform to support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code on the screen to connect or visit us online at jeromechurch.org slash church dash center. Today, we are continuing our worship series for Lent called Witness at the Cross. So let's hear today's message from Pastor Bruce. So would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, according to the Gospels, Golgotha, the place of the skull, was full of witnesses at Jesus' crucifixion and death. There was Simon of Cyrene and his two sons. Simon is the one who was compelled to carry Jesus' cross when Jesus himself faltered on the way to the place of his crucifixion. Of course, Jesus was present, and the two men, the thieves who were crucified with him, there was a group of women, including Mary Magdalene, the Mary, the mother of Jesus, the centurion, and the other soldiers to carry out this capital punishment. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, the beloved disciple, the chief priest, the scribes, and other bystanders and passers-by who all respond in different ways. Today, we stand with the women who witnessed Jesus' crucifixion and death. Hear these words from Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. And now the words from Matthew 27, 55, and 56. Many women were there, watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As I was thinking about this sermon and the women who were involved throughout Jesus' ministry, it suddenly dawned on me that most of the formation of my faith had actually come and been handed down through women who had been in my life, starting with my grandmother, my nana, and my own mother. We call her pastor mom around here, but Susan Dickerson. And so it was through my maternal side that my faith started uh, to take me to church, to involve me in Sunday school, to read Bible stories, to sing religious songs, 
to go and see my grandmother down in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, sing with the church choir. That was the early formation of my faith. And then when we left the church and came back, it was through my mother that I joined the church choir, joined the youth group, and really began my faith formation as a young adult. Following college, I would find other people. After I'd returned to church in a pastoral change, after about a year of returning to London Wall United Methodist Church, I was introduced to Pastor Valerie Weibel. And uh, Pastor Val became a friend, a colleague, and my mentor. She was there to stand with me at my ordination, lay hands on me. We still continue to have lunch occasionally to this day, and she was a major proponent of helping me find my way through seminary and helping me with answering the historical questions and all the questions for my provisional years and ordination. She was such a large influence. In seminary, I met my best friend, Pastor Lori Steele, who uh, she and I still talk almost daily as we uh, struggle through the highs and lows of ministry together. Uh, and though our theologies may differ, we uh, sharpen each other as uh, two swords clashing against each other as we discuss theology and biblical understanding and how we live into these things in the world around us. To be honest, I'm still being molded by a staff of great disciples in the form of my very own staff here, right here at Jerome Church. If you weren't aware of our uh, 15, 16 member staff, most of them are women. And we have discussions and we have conversations and we come together in prayer and we love each other like siblings in Christ. And they, with the work of the Holy Spirit, they change me and they transform me and they make me better. They make me a better pastor through their theological understandings and the questions they ask and the questions I'm able to ask them as we grow together in discipleship. Women have played a major role in my ministry, helping me along. Some have been sisterly, some have been maternal. All have been a blessing. Yet, Throughout history, the work of women in Christianity has often been ignored and reduced to models of simple piety, especially those gathered at the cross. Yet the amazing thing to me is, even though it says that in Matthew's gospel they were watching from a distance, and from last week's passage we know that they were right there in front of the cross, the one thing that always amazes me is that they remained. After the events of Gethsemane, where most of the disciples ran and hid, it was the women who followed Jesus from his trial up to Golgotha, crying, beating their chests, feeling the pain. They surrounded Mary in support, and they supported each other as disciples. They remained when the other disciples fled. The women found in Scripture and throughout Christian tradition were patrons. They were leaders in formal and informal ways. They provided maternal and sisterly love and loyalty. Women who seek truth in unexpected and powerful ways. Women who lamented and protested injustice or rebelled against authority are the perceived status quo in faithful ways that honored God. All these women were bearing witness to the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the women at the cross bore witness to the life, ministry, death, and yes, they too would be the first to bring news of the resurrection of Jesus. And they still are doing that same work today. And we need to acknowledge that. 
we need to realize that the women within ministry throughout history have played a powerful role in Jesus' ministry and the ministry of the church throughout history. Friends, I've already told you how I am blessed for the women who've helped me throughout my ministry, my call to God, who have supported me and loved me and held me accountable. And those who are working with me side by side to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And so I need to, to think about two things from this sermon. Think about who the women in your life who have led you through ministry, not just by being examples of piety, but actually led you through ministry. Who has supported you? Who has taught you? you who has guided you? Who has pastored you? Who has cared for you? And once you have done that, ask yourself, who else in our time and our history and our Christian faith may be speaking to us now in the same way? Yet like many of the women throughout history and our faith are being ignored, what are they teaching us? How are they witnessing to Christ on the cross? Go forth with God's blessing, acknowledging those who witnessed Christ, who witnessed the triune God to each of us each and every day. Let us no longer ignore them, but let us walk side by side with them. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's good to be with you again in worship today. Today we are continuing our worship and study series for Lent as we consider the crucifixion of Jesus in new ways and explore it through the eyes of the witnesses. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome Church. While you are there, please be sure to check in to worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore all of the opportunities in the app, including upcoming events and ways to volunteer in a local mission or to grow deeper in your faith by participating in a class or a study. There is still time to grow in your faith this Lent season by joining in the Lent study based on the book, Witness at the Cross, which is meeting on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. in a hybrid format. Also during Lent, we are continuing our prayer and praise service on Wednesday evenings, which is held in person in the sanctuary at Jerome Church from 6.30 to 7 p.m. You can learn more about all of these opportunities and connect to signups through the Church Center app or by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org. As we journey closer to the celebration of Easter, I want to share some opportunities to worship here at Jerome Church during Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday on April 2nd at our regular worship times. And then during Holy Week, we will have three weeknight in-person worship opportunities, beginning on Wednesday, April 5th with our prayer and praise service at 6.30 p.m. We'll have a Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. on April 6th and a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. on April 7th. Then on Sunday, April 9th, we will have three in-person worship services beginning with a sunrise service at 7 a.m., followed by our traditional service at 9 a.m. and a contemporary family service at 10.30 a.m. Online worship will also be available at 9 and 10.30 a.m. You can learn more about all of these worship opportunities by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org slash Easter. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave to us to love God and love people. And you can support the missions and ministries of this church by giving a financial offering today. You can give electronically through the link in today's video description on the Jerome Church website or through the Give tab in the Church Center app. 
And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can connect to our online giving platform by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address on the screen below. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I want to invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms and in the Church Center app. And know that we look forward to worshiping with you next week as we continue our Lent worship series together and begin to celebrate Holy Week and Easter. Have a blessed week, friends. the blood